As the psalmist says, How lovely are your dwelling places, O Lord of hosts. My soul longed and even yearned for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy for the living God. Have you longed to be in this place today as we gather to worship the one true God? Let us stand together and proclaim, Better is one day here than a thousand elsewhere. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, we come to you thanking you for the opportunity to enter into your presence this morning. And God, we thank you for every soul that is here in this building and those gathered around a radio or internet connection. We thank you so much for the opportunity to worship you. God, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. And it's better to be here today than anywhere else that any of us can even imagine. Thank you for letting us be here together. Thank you for everybody that, is having, that has a divine appointment right now. And God, we would be amiss if we didn't say thank you for the, the men, the dads that brought us into this world. And, and we thank you so much for the parents, for the influence, the godly influence that they have had on our lives. 
And we just want to say today, God, we celebrate our earthly fathers, but most importantly, we celebrate you as our heavenly father. And God, thank you so much for all things you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church. Be seated if you would. Great to see you this morning. I come to you to, to tell you men, happy Father's Day. It is great to have men that are so uh, involved in, in God's work and bringing their families to church with them. For you men that are, that are here, for you children that are here with your fathers, glad to have you here with, with us today as well. I bring you greetings also from the big old city of St. Louis. My uh, family, we had the opportunity to represent you at the Southern Baptist Convention last week. And we thank God for people like Jonathan and Jason filling in and keeping things rolling here. Uh, at the Southern Baptist Convention, if you've read, you've seen some things that are very good. Our Southern Baptist Convention is doing wonderful. Uh, we are blessed to have a great new president again. Uh, it, was, it was pretty tedious. Monday and Tuesday was, seemed divisive there, be quite honest. But Wednesday morning, they came together. We have a, a good president in Steve Gaines. He is the pastor at Bellevue Baptist Church in Memphis. We're thankful for him being the president. He was elected by acclamation. That means that it was a 100% vote, so we're thankful for that. There's other things that happened, resolutions that were passed. A couple of them that I wasn't necessarily for. I think some of them would have been better off if we had left it alone. Uh, but we voted and it's the way it is and it's getting a lot of national attention. Uh, so, you know, that's just how it goes when you have two people. You're going to have two different opinions. But we go forward and we're thankful to be a part of the great Southern Baptist Convention. Um, today we want to come together, though, to worship. And we're glad that you're here. If you have a bulletin, please notice all of the many announcements in there. There's a lot of things happening and going on. Uh, let's know, let's, we would be amiss if we didn't uh, announce that to this afternoon from 1 to 3 will be the uh, receiving friends for uh, Charlie Ferguson. And then at 3 o'clock will be the funeral. So be in prayer for that family. Uh, so let's, let's remember them in a special way. There's also other uh, family members that have lost loved ones. We pray for them in a special way as well. Uh, friends, uh, it's not easy losing loved ones, but we know that when they're in a better place, it makes it a little bit, a little bit easier. So uh, let's just be in prayer for those today, and let's just uh, have a good time of worship, a, a day of celebration as we go to him and just celebrate what he has done in our lives. So today, continue worshiping. Jason, come lead us, brother. You know, Jesus said he promised that if we lifted him up, that he would draw all people to himself. Think about that. If we lift the name of Jesus, he's the one that draws people. We want to see that happen. We want all the world to see his glory. So as we gather in this place, we lift up his name. As we stand together and sing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, and holy, 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 hymn 66 and 68.
come up for a few moments. Any other children across the congregation, come on down for a few moments. Children chat. Good to see all of you here today. Have you all had a good day so far? All right. I've got some things here that I want your help with. And I've got some cards that I'm going to use as well. I need your help because we're going to talk about a mystery person. Do you all know what a mystery is? It's something that you don't know yet. This mystery is going to have clues, and I'm going to give you clues. And I want you all to help me. I guess you, you five on the front can help me, okay? Because that doesn't mean you all are not important. That just means that they're going to help me hold these things because they're five in a row. Scoot up one step. That way you'll be all on the same step. All right. Uh, are you ready to begin? We're going we're gonna to have clues. The first clue starts with the letter A. So I want you to hold A right there, okay? Oh, I bet you've got it figured out already. Okay, let's see if you do. Even when we disobey and do something wrong, this person's willing to forgive us. All right? What about the letter H? We need one more down here. <laughs> there's more than five. There's six. Y'all y'all both come on down. I thought, well, I've counted wrong. All right, H. This person makes and helps us when we make important decisions and teaches us right from wrong and teaches us by example how to love one another. The next, per next person is going to be an F. You think you got it figured out still? Oh, you might. This person is forgiving, even when we disobey or do something wrong. And this person is willing to forgive. And when we need to talk, A is when we need, when we need to talk, this person's willing to listen to us. And now let's do an R. Let's do R right here. Hold R. This person's ready to reach out and love. Have y'all figured it out yet? You trying to figure it out? Ah, uh, don't, don't tell nobody. This person is ready, ready to reach out and love and do whatever we need. So that person's always ready. Now we got an E. Hold an E. This person is energetic. No matter how tired this person is, uh, this person is ready to do things with us and for us most of the time. All right. Now we got an H. 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 What am I? I was looking at the H. I am so confused. Thank you. This person is a teacher, uh, and he teaches us the most important lessons in life, teaches us right from wrong and how to, uh, sh how to love by example. You know something? I might have told you the wrong stuff on there for all I know. I probably did. But the bottom line is, what does that word spell? Father. Father. Who is that person? Father. Now, I know some people, you may not have your earthly father uh, present, there's a lot of things that could happen, and, and, you know, things occur. But here's what I want everybody to understand. Even if you don't have a good relationship with your earthly father, or if your earthly father is not around anymore, you have to always recognize that you have a heavenly father. You know our heavenly father, who is that? God. Jesus. God. God is our heavenly father, and he's always there for us. And he will always do all these things for us. Forgiving, attentive, a teacher, a helpful, a helpful friend. He is energetic and he's always ready. So our Heavenly Father is always there for us. So I pray that I can be a good father. And I know the other men here that are dads hope they can be a good daddy too. And that we want to be. And the bottom line is we need to thank God though that he is our precious, perfect Heavenly Father. Luke eleven thirteen 13 says, If you then know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give to those who ask Him? So I want you to always remember, your Heavenly Father is always wanting to be there for you. Okay? I know I was scatterbrained today, but do you have any questions or anything? Any comments? Okay. Do any of you want to pray today? Thank you. Everybody gather around me. Let's pray. Let's thank God for what he does for us and for the, the men in our lives. Let's pray.
Thank you. Amen. Jason. Let's continue singing out this morning. Hymn 98, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Let's stand as we sing. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful Lord's Day. We just thank you to be able to have the freedom to come to your house to worship and lift up your name. We just ask you to be the brother Mark as he brings the message. Just give him the message we need to hear. And if there's anyone here that does not know you as our personal Savior, we pray that today will be the day they accept you. Just be of our nation, our leaders. Just give them the ability to lead our nation, Lord. And we just ask you to be this offering, use it for your ongoing kingdom. For these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Take your copy of God's Word, if you would. Let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, please. It's going to talk about the man of God this morning. This is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. Quiet, I'm watching the ball game. Bring back all the change. I'm not made out of money. You are going and you will have fun. Who's paying the bills around here anyway? If you break your leg, don't come running to me. Get down before you kill yourself. Quit playing with your food. Be quiet. Can't you see I'm trying to think? Why? Because I said so. You better get that junk picked up before your mother comes in here. Just wait till you have kids of your own. I was not asleep. I was just resting my eyes. Yeah, I got one amen out of that one. <laughs> Words that most dads have said to their kids at some point in life, at one time or another. And, and the, the dads in here can probably come up with a, a whole slew of more quotes that you have said to add to this list. Being a father can be an interesting experience and trying experience as well, can it? Parents, we spend the first few years or the first part of our child's life trying to teach them and wanting them to talk and walk. And we spend the rest of their childhood telling them to sit down and be quiet. You know, that's just the way parenting goes. Fathering and parenting can be a real trial. Dads, you know that here. But you also realize that it can be a true blessing. And today is Father's Day, and we honor all the dads here today. When giving a description of a man, when you hear a, a words describing a man, you might hear them described as a man of the world. You might hear a man described as a man of war. You could hear him described as a man of means. Or you might, as we see in Scripture sometimes, a man of God. You might hear someone described as a man of God. So I want us to talk about being a man of God today. What does it mean to be a man of God? Where is this found? Well, it's here in 1 Timothy chapter 6. If you're there already, 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning with verse number 11. God's Word says... But as for you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you are called and which you are made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Let's pray. Father... Bless the reading of your word, I pray, and, and let me convey what you have for us all to hear today, God. Lord, thank you for the men of God that are here in this place. Those listening by way of radio or by internet connection. God, we thank you for the men who rise up to be the men that you call them to be. Lord, I pray today that we would hear from your word what you want us to hear. Bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we're going to talk about a man of God. And we see in this scripture we just read, there, there's, two, uh, there's two places where we hear about the man of God. We're going to refer to another one in just a moment. But this first one we see here in, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, you see that the first thing that a man of God needs to do is to flee from worldliness. Flee from worldliness. You see that in the first part of chapter 11, I mean, verse 11. It says, but as for you, O man of God, flee these things. What are these things? You have to see that, that if he's talking about these things, you've got to look backwards to see some of these things. If you look back to verse number 1, you'll see that treating your boss disrespectfully is one of these things. You see in verse number 2, taking advantage of a Christian employer is one of these things. Friends, men, we've got to be respectful to our employers. We don't need to be bad-mouthing our boss behind his back. 
We shouldn't be doing those things that the world does. This is part of fleeing from worldliness. We should have complete honesty at our place of employment. And we should seriously seek to benefit our employer. I know some of you are saying, at the place I work? Yeah, right. Well, I'm serious, friends. That's what God's Word says. What do you work for? Why do you go to work? If your answer is immediately thinking of finances and money, then you're thinking about the wrong thing. Because if you're working only to bring money to the table, bring money to your house, then you're never going to gain the satisfaction that you're seeking. God's Word says here that we should work to bring success to the company that we serve. We should work to bring success to the company that we serve. That's what it says to flee from these things, and that is part of it. we got to flee from talking bad or working in the wrong way. Another, way that, another thing that God's Word says that we should flee is in verse 4. Verse 4 says, He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words. And verse 5 says, He causes constant friction. So we should flee from controversies and quarrels. That's a big problem that some of us men have, that word arrogant. Sometimes we don't want to admit when we are wrong. And we don't want to face up to the fact that, that we might not know everything about everything. It's hard to admit that we don't have complete understanding all the time about everything. But let me say something. If you think that you know everything about everything, you're going to be a stumbling block to your marriage. You've got to realize that you don't know everything about everything, and you need to admit it sometimes. Because if you don't, you're going to leave little room for meaningful conversation and companionship. And friends, men, listen. If you are part of this constant friction and unhealthy craving come for controversy and quarrels about words, it, we're going to be a problem in the church if we're that way too. Most church splits are over men wanting more power. And we've got to realize that God says to flee from these things. He said it through the Apostle Paul. Verse 11 says, flee from these things. So we need to flee from these things. So that's another thing we need to flee from. What is another What is another one, though? If you look at verses 6 through 10, you will see that our desire for wealth is another thing that we should be fleeing from. A man of God stands in direct contradiction to the world. If you are a man of God, you are going to be in direct contradiction to the world. The measure of a man is not how much money he has in his bank account. Verse 6 says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Friends, I want to be a content man, and I know you do as well. So for us to do that, we must flee these things that the Apostle Paul was writing about that God inspired him to write. Flee these things. So, I've been all negative here saying, well, we need to flee, flee, flee. What is a positive response? A positive response is verse 3, agree to the sound instruction of Christ. We should be agreeing to the sound instruction. Another positive response, and jot this down, it's over in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Just skip over a couple of pages probably in your Bible. To 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, this is the other instance of man of God in the New Testament. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So friends, we've got to realize that we need to, to seriously follow what God's Word says. Men... We should be all about the book. We should be all about following God's holy word. And that's, that's what it means to be a man of God. So the first point is that. Flee from worldliness. That's the first part of verse 11. The second point is this, men. If we want to be a man of God, then we should follow after the things of God. 
That's in the second part of verse 11. Flee these things. Then it says pursue, follow righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. You see, that word pursue is diako, which means to seek after, to strive for, to practice, to follow. To seek after, to strive for, to practice, to follow, to pursue. Those are the things that God is telling us to do, men. And if we look at this, we need to realize those are some virtues that we ought to be seeking and, and following after. So what are they? First one listed. Righteousness. Righteousness. That just basically means do what is right. We need to be about doing the right thing all the time or seeking to do the right thing. The second virtue listed, godliness. That means being devoted to prayer, being devoted to reading and studying and meditating. Godliness. Men, we're called to take the lead. And I realize how hard it is because I'm in that boat with you. We too often don't take the lead. And we, though, according to God's word, we are called to take the lead in family prayer. We are called to take the lead in reading scripture. We are called to take the lead in deciding spiritual matters. Men, it's time for us to rise up and be the men of God that he wants us to be. Be godly men. The next virtue is this, faith. The Christian faith. Trust. Faithfulness. Love is the next one. Agape love. Self-sacrificial love. Ready to give of yourself love. Steadfastness is the next one. That's patience. Endurance. Staying with the ship even in the hard times. Don't throw in the towel. Don't abandon ship. But stay, stick it out, even through the tough times. Verse 21, if you were to look down in, 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 in 1 Timothy chapter 6, you'll see some of them didn't stick around. We need to be men who will stick around and stay steadfast, patient, enduring. And then the sixth virtue that God's Word says that we should be seeking after is gentleness, meekness. Meekness is not weakness. And too often, us men think that we can't be meek and be a true man. We can't be gentle and be a true man. That's just not considered to be a manly disposition. But according to God's Word, according to Scripture, how a man relates to others... Friends, there's absolutely no room for harsh words. We have got to watch our mouth, watch our uh, uh, attitude, watch ourselves and how we talk to our wives, how we talk to our children. We have got to be a constant battle against ourselves, against our own flesh and blood. We've got to make sure that we never lay an angry hand on our children or our spouses. If you do, you got God to answer to. We have got to make sure that we hold back from that. We got to follow after these virtues. We ought to seek after them and, and be, be like a laser pointer going after righteousness and godliness and faith and love and steadfastness and gentleness. So if we want to be a man of God, we got to flee worldliness. We got to, secondly, we got to follow after the things of God. And then third, fight for truth. Fight for for truth. Verse 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Men, all of life can be considered a fight. I know it is. It's tough. It's hard because we struggle against opposing forces. We drive down the road and we see the billboards. We turn on the computer and we see the ads. We see the television ads. 
we are faced with it at our place of employment where the temptations are there every, at every turn. We, we, we get placed in situations where they're telling off-color comments and, and jokes and we are left with a dilemma. Should I laugh or not laugh? But it's the boss telling the joke and I don't know what to do. We got to fight for truth. The Bible is clear. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Life, listen, life is a war that we will win. Life is a war that we will win if we remain strong in the faith. You see? Life is a war that you and I will win if we will but remain strong in the faith. What does it mean here in verse 12 where it says that we should fight the good fight of the faith? The first thing that we see, it's a good fight. It says that it is a good fight. It is a fight that is worth fighting, friends. When you are successful, it's going to produce goodness. So we got to see that the first thing about this fight, fight the good fight of faith, it is worth the fight. It's a good fight. The second thing that we see is that it involves eternal life. It is too easy for you and me to get wrapped up in our present situation, in our present set of goods and bads and everything else that we're going through in life. We forget that this world is nothing more than a hallway to eternity. We have but, what, a hundred years if we're lucky? That we are walking down this hallway, and when we get to the end of that hallway, we're either going to go to heaven or we're going to go to hell. There's no other place. There's no other direction. At the end of this hallway of life that we are living right now, we've got to realize that we are going one of directions. And we've got to fight the good fight of truth. We've got to fight for truth. That's what God's Word says. Nothing short of total effort is acceptable. Why is that? Because notice God, uh, Paul's last word on this. If you look to the end of 1 Timothy chapter 6, you look to verse 13 and 14, you see what does he say? He says, I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who is his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession to keep the commandment unstained, to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is a big load to hold. We have got to realize, men, that we are to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. As I said, nothing short of total effort is acceptable. We have got a lot of work to do. And we've got to get on the work. If you're an Olympic athlete, you train hard, train hard. And I heard that, that, that Grayson Anderson's been training hard. And she's now a part of the junior Olympic team. And we're, we're glad she is. But she's been working hard, hard, hard. And... If you're an Olympic athlete, you're going to try and try and work and work. If you're LeBron James or Steph Curry, which one are you for? It's playing later. They have worked hard all year for their entire lives to, to win an NBA championship. They will never match up to Magic Johnson or Larry Bird or Michael Jordan, but they're trying. I mean, hey. But you see what, what's going on? They have worked and they have worked and they have worked for this championship. Friends, that's the way it is in our spiritual life. Work, work, work. Don't quit. Don't ever give up. Don't, don't lay down on the sidelines because you didn't get your way and put your feet up in there and start kicking. We have got to keep on the work. The man of God, he flees, he follows, and he fights question for all of us 
Will you be that man? Will you be that person? Will you be that person? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time we've had. And Lord, I pray that whatever occurs in these next moments will bring honor and glory to you. God, I pray if there's one here that they have been walking down the hallway of life and they have never set the course for eternity in heaven. The only way to heaven is through the shed blood of Jesus. And when they get to the end of that hallway, they are going to automatically go to hell unless they accept the free gift of salvation offered to us through your son Jesus. Admit our sin, believe that he died, rose again, is in heaven. Confess him as Lord, turn away from all the stuff we've been doing and turn completely to you. God, I, I, there may be men here that want to come rededicate themselves. And you know something? God, I'm not the Holy Spirit, but your Holy Spirit's working. And, and maybe there's some ladies, some young people that feel you compelling them to do whatever it is you're calling them to do. This altar is open to everyone all the time for you to do business with us, for us to do business with you. God, I thank you for this time we've had. And, and God, we're excited about what you're about to do right now. Lead us, show us what you want us to do, and don't let any of us hold back. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.